Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over what blueprint nodes are and how exactly to understand them and use them. So in my previous beginner tutorial we went over what variables were and kind of went into some common variables and understanding what they are. And then in here we're going to kind of take the next step further on how to begin building our functionalities. So like if a character was to jump or um, if you were going to press a button, whatever the case is, we're going to go in on how you can understand to take that next step to creating that. Now in this video, it does take the assumption that you do not know um, programming or you've never touched blueprints. So it starts at the basics of just understanding. If you already know blueprints and you kind of already understand, feel free to look at my other tutorials or just other tutorials out there and uh, feel free to skip this one. But if you are wanting just to begin and start learning, this video is for you. I do also recommend join the Discord. If you ever have questions, feel free to hop in, ask questions. I'm pretty active there, as well as a few that have joined as well. Uh, so just know that that resource is open and available for you. Um, so what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to begin explaining the different type of nodes that are available, the types of nodes. Uh, just explaining kind of the purpose of some wildly popular ones. And then we'll just dive into further explanations. So yeah, let's get into the video. All right, and before I get into the explanation, I did want to let you know that I did put down a lot of nodes that are available. This does not cover every node. There's no way I'm going to be able to cover all of them because if we were to right click here and go down this list, you'll notice that there is an intense amount of different types of nodes. Now I did just put down um, some main nodes that are used quite often as well as just to give you a broad understanding of what exists and then get you to the point where you'll be able to understand the concepts and then work towards building whatever features you're looking for. And of course, um, you want that understanding so you know where to look in the future. And this is supposed to give you that starting step towards making your way in that journey. So from here, uh, let's kind of go into what a node is. So a node is essentially like actions you need to take in order to reach whatever functionality you're wanting to do. So like, for example, if you are wanting to make a character jump, so you need to take the actions to get the player to jump. Granted, jumping in Unreal Engine is actually relatively easy because Unreal Engine has a function that makes it easy. And that is actually the case for a lot of things in Unreal. The main problem that you come with Unreal Engine is just knowing what exists because there may be something to make it easier. And a lot of the times when you are building, if things tend to feel extremely difficult, then you may be doing something wrong or you may just not realize that something exists to make your life easier. Of course, that doesn't go into everything, but usually if you find yourself doing something extremely complicated and you feel like it's a very easy feature, there probably is a better way to do it. Uh, granted, there are things that may just be complicated and you do have to take that into consideration. But let's get back on topic with uh, player jumping. So like, let's say you wanna make the player jump. So you have to take those actions. So we need to take the nodes to make a player jump. We know that it is easy because they have a native uh, feature. Well, I know it and then now I'll teach you. So the first step is we need to get the player's character to jump. And first step is, okay, we need the player character. We would have to start from the beginning. Where is the player character? Luckily, if we were to right click and actually just type player character, we can get the player character. And if you hover on top of it, it kind of gives you an explanation of what it is. And for all nodes in Unreal Engine, if you hover on top, you do get a description. If you ever need a further explanation, you can always Google. Um, another thing is you could always just like um, chat GBT it. Uh, granted, take that with like a grain of salt. It's an AI, it's never perfect, but it could help you with some better understanding. But so if we had our player character and then now we just need him to jump. So if we were to drag this off, we can actually just type jump. And that would actually be really easy to build because, okay, you made your character jump. <laughs> this isn't actually how you would build out 
uh, for a character to jump. But let's say you had like an object to force the player to jump, you could do something like this. Um, I'm not going into specifically building a jump functionality, uh, but just try to get the concept of you have to create a set of actions. You have to get the information to make those actions happen. So just like we got the player character, once we know who we're going to make jump, then we want the jump to happen. So it goes in steps and nodes always move from left to right. So just like we had player character first, like we did it over here, like if I bring it back up, we start from here, we get the information and then we jump. So that's what nodes are. And then to move on to the types of nodes, what we have are event nodes. And these are always going to be the start of your actions. So think of it as the first block that you're going to need to build your function. You're going to have to go from the events. There are other things called functions, which <laughs> also can help create um, functionalities. Go figure, functions can create functionalities. Uh, we'll go into that in a bit, uh, but we do need to understand event nodes before we get into there. So event nodes are the type of events that will begin whatever functionality you want to happen. So there's different type of events that could happen. So begin play, it's very common. This is when the actor is first placed in the world, you will then begin um, the first event. This will get fired off once this uh, blueprint exists. So like if you have, let's say a cube in the world and it exists from the start, then begin play will begin the moment you start your game. But let's say you have like a monster and it doesn't get created till like, let's say 10 minutes into the game, then this will get fired on once that monster is created. So begin plays use very often as well as begin overlap and overlap. Huh. Actor begin overlap is when uh, two actors are touching each other and that's where we get this other actor. This lets us know like, okay, we can check to see which actor is currently touching um, the first actor. And then end overlap is just the reverse. Once the other actor is no longer touching. So like, let's say a player touches a cube and you just want to make a pop-up that says, hey, you're touching me. And then once they walk away, you make that disappear. That's what you would use these two. Another thing to go into is you'll notice how we have the other actors. When we went over variables, we explained the different type of uh, variables that are available. And essentially think of these as a type of communication. So kind of like instead of storing a var variable in here, we're simply going to pass that variable reference. Now granted, variables, you actually store information. This is just passing information. So it's not really a variable, but hopefully that gives you an understanding on what to do. So when this begins, what it does is it takes the actor that um, began overlapping with the, the current actor. So if the player character overlapped with the cube, we can tell the cube the player character is overlapping. And that's what this reference does. Um, if you actually hover on top of them, they actually tell you what they are. So like if we were to create a variable and let's just type actor, it's just like that where we have an actor type if you hover on top of this, this is an actor object reference. So it's very similar in that type of understanding. And you can do that with any of these. If you hover on top of this, you get a player control object. If we were to scroll down, you can hover on top of this. This tells you a float. Now, uh, sometimes with colors, you can tell that there is a difference between things. 
uh, between what type of variable. So like yellow usually is referencing like a, a vector and X, Y, and Z. Um, so if we were to actually split this, you end up getting three different type of floats. So let's actually recombine that. I did go over splitting things in the variable tutorial, but just kind of a brief explanation is uh, essentially once you band in uh, multiple types of information, you end up uh, having the ability to uh, split them so that you can break it down even further. So vectors in that sense are a combination of three different float variables that can give you either a location or a, um, a scale. It's just three float values and that's why we have the ability to split it. Other things would be like um, for the hit value. Um, we're not gonna go in depth, but if we split it, we'll notice that, oh, auto save. There's a ton of information here that is consisting into that hit value. Let's recombine it, but nonetheless, if we hover on top of that, it is a structure. Now I'm not gonna go into structures um, in depth, but structures basically contain multiple different types of variables of different, um, uh, of, of anything. It could be consisting of floats, vectors, all of the above. Now I'm not gonna go into complete explanations of everything. Uh, but just kind of like a general sense of the events. These are all different types of events that occur in the game. Uh, so event destroyed when the player is destroyed. So um, if let's say you destroyed a cube and you wanted something to happen afterwards, uh, you'd be able to be like print cube has been destroyed and just tell the player the cube's been destroyed. Um, where we have damage, Unreal Engine has a built-in damage system that you're able to utilize. So if you ever want a player to take damage, uh, you'd be able to use these nodes. So just kind of a brief description of the three. So any damage is just like when you want to apply damage to a character of any kind. Uh, huh. Radial damage is when you want to basically do like in the area type damage. And then point damage is when you want to specifically deal damage in a specific location. So like, let's say you wanted to shoot somebody's leg off. You, sh you point damage, destroy their leg, and that's why you have a bone name because you can do damage to that specific, um, that specific area. We have hit, this is essentially whenever a character is, um, What's the best way to describe it is, I mean, it's as it said, when it's hit. So like, let's say a character ran into a pole. You could do event hit, player got hit by, by a pole, and then you can, I don't know, displace the character, make them fall to the ground, whatever it is. Or maybe player got hit by a bullet. And then from here, this is where you could do apply damage. So kind of what we have here, where it's event any damage, we actually want to do player was hit by a bullet. Now let's deal damage. And then you could just be like, deal 10 damage, whatever the case may be. Um, and as I just showed you that I haven't actually gone into the execution pins. So as explaining, let's drag this off a little. Let's steal this over here. So from here, execution pins control the flow of which the blueprints go. Uh, so every action you take, it starts typically left from right. So you start from here. And then as I did that, where I can apply damage, you also notice we have the other two types of damage. So if we wanted to blow off somebody's leg, we could do point damage. If we just wanted to do um, a radius damage, maybe you want to blow off the entire torso. I don't know, uh, whatever the imagination may be. Um, or if you just want to destroy, like, I don't know, create a crater in, in the floor. I imagine you, actually, you'll have to do a lot more <laughs> bad example. But anyways, for event hit, let's just do a apply damage. 
So from here, it's like, okay, I got hit. We start from the left and then we follow this pin and then it goes into apply damage. Now, another thing we can do is that if we dragged off from here, let's just type delay. Now I haven't gone into what delay is, uh, it's a type of flow control, but we'll get into flow controls in a bit. What delay does is it basically just pauses the entire flow for a certain duration. And then this is based into seconds. So 0 0.2 is 0 0.2 of a second. If we just did one, what this would do is that once the player gets hit, stop this entire flow from happening for one second. Once that is done, we move on to the next one. And that's when we apply damage. The other thing is when I mentioned with all of these inputs that we have different types of references. So we have the other component, we have just the other actor, and then we have my component, which is ourselves. We have the location of where we were hit, um, let's not go into those, but, and then we also have just the hit reference. This is the struct that I'm not going to go into, but I mentioned it, had, it contains a bunch of variables that are also very useful. But for this example, let's just drag off like, okay, since we're applying damage, who is the damage actor? Well, that would be our self. So if you actually drag this off, you have the ability to do self. So we are being damaged and you'll notice that this has a pin that gets connected base damage so this is where you'd be able to either specify an amount or plug in a variable so as we went over variables previously you'd be able to plug that in but for this case let's just switch this to like 10 and then we have the damage causer so who caused the damage we could grab this other actor and we can plug that in. And you also notice when you drag, Unreal actually won't let you plug in things that don't make sense. So you'll notice that object reference is not compatible with a float. So this requires a float and obviously our actor is not a float, so it doesn't work. So you would drag it in there. So what would happen is that after we get hit by something, stop for one second, and then we apply damage and then we would do 10 damage. What apply damage does is this is a node that calls this event. So they kind of work in, in tandem with each other. If you ever want a character to deal damage by applying damage, whoever this damage actor is, which is our self, calls this. So um, let's say, Instead of doing damage to ourself, what if we wanted to damage an opponent? When event hit happens, you'd want to apply damage, but you would want to plug in the opponent that, that you're dealing damage. Um, so let's say if we were to drag this down, and let's just say um, player character. Let's drag that up and move that over here. Okay, so let's go with this. So let's say our current, um, let's just say a box. We're, we're currently a box. This box uh, hit the player. When it hit the player, it's going to tell the player, hey, I want to apply damage. And the player's blueprint would then get event any damage, and we would pass along any information we plugged in here. So we're saying we're dealing damage to the player, damage actor, and the damage causer is going to be, we could just say the box. So we would pass along like, hey, the box is dealing damage. We have 10 value here. We're dealing 10 damage. So they communicate with each other. So let me delete this. 
I kind of went way further into uh, getting hit and dealing any damage, but hopefully that kind of gives you an understanding of what exactly they are and how to use them. There are lots of different types of events that are available. If you actually just right click, do add event, you can actually find the whole list here. Some are categorized, some are not. Uh, these ones are not categorized into anything further because honestly they're used quite often. Uh, and then the last thing with events I wanna go over is you have the ability to create your own events. There are tons of possibilities you can make your own events. So there's not possibly a way for me to go over any type of example, but kind of think of it just like we went over where if somebody's getting hit and then we apply damage, you have different types of events that you can connect just like that. So in example that I made is that with my custom events, I basically did some like basic functions of how to get somebody to get into the kitchen, putting stuff into the oven, and then you can either bake a cake or bake a pie, whatever the case may be. It kind of goes in steps. So obviously Unreal Engine doesn't have basic functionalities of telling somebody, hey, move this character into the kitchen. Now make that character put whatever we're making into the oven and then specifying whether we are making a pie or making a cake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these four. I'm gonna drag this up. So let's zoom in. Custom events allow you to make your own type of actions. And from there, you'll be able to communicate with other types of blueprints, communicate to other types of functions you have made to put together to make whatever you're wanting to create. In this case, we're gonna want to either make a pie or we're gonna make a cake. So let's say from our theoretical scenario, we want our character to go into the kitchen. So let me actually grab begin play. At the beginning of our game, we want to send our character into the kitchen. So we have our Manny character, which is the Unreal standard character, and we wanna tell him to go into the kitchen. So to simplify things drastically, we're only gonna call these functions, we're not actually gonna build them. So at the beginning of the game, you can actually type in go in kitchen. And all custom events that you create, you can call in your same blueprint to do those functions. So at the beginning of the game, we're going to call this event. So this blue node that we plug in, let me zoom out a little because I think it gets a little blurry if I zoom in too quick or too, um, ah, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, before, oh, losing train of thought, okay. And what I mean by call is that it will start that event. So by doing this blue node and dragging off and calling it is it's now going to trigger whatever is inside this go in kitchen event that we made. And from this event, let's say that we now want to uh, put whatever we made into the oven. So what we would need to do is okay, we're in the kitchen, let's put whatever we made in the kitchen. So just like we did go in kitchen, we'll do put in oven from here. But let's also say, hey, we wanna put it in the oven. We don't know what it is. So what we would need to do is that in our put in oven, put in oven, we will we'll need to actually specify what type of object we'll need. So from our inputs, just like you see with these other nodes where they have all these inputs available, we need to do the same thing. So let's say we need to specify whether we wanna make a pie or uh, a cake. So there's two different things we can do that. If we have only two options, you could potentially use um, a Boolean 
variable where it's just like um, is pi. And basically we could use like a true or false. If it's a pi, we want to bake a pi. But if it's not a pi, let's bake a k. So that could work with two options. But let's say we just want to um, pass along whether it's a pi or a cake. So we could just do actor, which is just a very standard of, of any type of blueprint, type in actor. And from here, let's move this out of the way. We would need to check to see, okay, is does our actor equal a pi or does it equal um, a cake? So we would have to do equal. And what we could do is if we had something exist, you would be able to type in, okay, pi. Oh, wait, why is, okay. I was wondering why it's over there. Obviously we don't have anything that's created as um, a pi or anything of the sorts. But of course you can do that or the other way would be instead of doing, hey, bake a pie or bake a cake, let's create a brand new custom event and let's call this bake. So instead of specifying, we could just be like, hey, we put it in the oven. Now we want to make something. Well, let's grab an input and let's just do an actor. So we put put an oven, and now let's bake. And we can plug it in. So we're able to tell, hey, we put this in the oven, and we're going to bake it. And then now, under baking, we can go through the functions of, OK, now that it's baking, now let's, um, I don't know, um, oh, I, I'm not great at baking, but nonetheless, like, let's say now the uh, pie is developing and it's increasing in shape, whatever the case may be, uh, you'd be able to add all those functionalities in here. And through that, we were able to communicate from the beginning of the game, we put our character in the kitchen, from the kitchen, he went into the oven. We specified what went into the oven. From here, we bake the cake um, by specifying, hey, this is what we're making. And then from here, we had all the actions of how to do the process of baking. So that's how you could go about creating your own custom events. You could do the same thing with um, any type of functions that you wanted to do in a game. So whether you're taking damage, whether you are picking up a gun. So like if a character walked on top of a gun, uh, once overlapping with that item, character picks it up, you let them know that, hey, I picked it up, now put the weapon in the hand, and you take all the necessary actions. So you're just taking everything and breaking it into pieces, putting it all together in a visual map. Let's just delete all of that. Let me move all of over here because this took me quite some time to put together. Put an oven, bake, and let's delete these. All right, so that kind of covers what events are. <laughs> and now let's go into what flow control is. Flow control lets you do exactly as the word flow states. So as things move from left to right through the execution pins, this allows you to control, hey, let's do specific things in this order based upon um, whatever type of flow control you're using before moving on to the next step or deciding what direction to go. So if we were to zoom in, the most popular thing you'll see in every tutorial is branches. Branches are widely used and super helpful. 
this helps you decide on the directions you want to go. So just like what I mentioned where we were going to either bake a cake or uh, bake a pie, this is where you'd plug in the boolean and say, hey, from here, if we are baking a pie, which is true, we'll now bake a pie. Or if it's false, you could do bake a cake, whatever the case is. I deleted the other two events, but nonetheless, bake, you get the understanding. And for the while loop, this is basically just a loop that will continue on up until uh, something has changed. So you would plug in the condition. So let's say um, we want to bake a cake as long as the oven is turned on. But the moment uh, the oven gets turned off, the condition would then become false. And then from there, this loop will stop and it will become complete. And then it will fire off the next step. So in contrary to the branch where it's like, okay, if true, we're gonna go one direction and it will just continue going in that execution. And then false, it will go in that way. So these two never happen at the same time. You either go one way or the other. For a loop, you'll continue on with this loop and it won't be going in this direction until this loop has been completed. So if we are cooking a pie, the entire duration, and once that is, the oven is turned off, we will then go off the completed. So both these would happen as long as this loop ends. If the loop never ends, it'll never complete. Uh, granted, Unreal Engine will tell you if that loop is indefinite, uh, but nonetheless, that's a while loop. And flip-flop is somewhat similar to branch, but what it does, instead of based on a condition, when you call an event, so if we did, let's drag this off, and let's do bake, and let's actually get our events back. I'm just doing control D duplicate, Custom events, you can't copy <laughs> custom events because you can only have one event with the same name. We'll do bake a cake. And let's do bake a pie. Compile, it'll get rid of those errors. So what it does is it's, it's a flip-flop. So it will do option A. And then if you ever bake again, it will do option B and it will just go back and forth. It will flip between the two. So if we had A where we're baking a cake, bake a pie. What it does is that if we call this event bake, it will go through, it will start at option A, and we'll make a cake. But let's say the player comes back and they bake again. It will then go to B and bake a pie and then it will just do that endlessly uh, back and forth. It flips. So it's like a switch. On is A, bake a cake. And then once you flip it again, B. So we'll go ahead, disattach that. Let's bring that over here. And for for loops, unlike the while loop, it will only loop a certain amount of time. It won't keep going. It will just go based upon the first and last index. And these are just integer, integer values. These are um, just the specified amounts that it's going to go through. So the first index is by default zero. And that's the first integer. And it will loop this starting from the number zero and then whatever the last number is entered in. So this can get a little bit more complicated once you go into um, like variables, uh, arrays, and things like that. So let's, we did go over variables. So for an array, 
let's say there is um, five recipes. And throughout all five recipes, you want to bake all of them. So if there was five recipes, what you also need to keep in mind is that it starts from zero. So if there's five, we want the last index to be four. And that's something to always remember that it starts from zero. You could manually change this to one and then you can do five. But usually if you're doing um, index, you'd probably just want to get the variable and just get whatever the last index is. So just make sure first index is zero. That is just the normal and common. And then what it would do is that if we did bake, it would go through all of them and it would start from zero, end at four, and we'll bake all five of those recipes. Now for for loop, uh, what it would do is very similar. You have the first and last except there's a break option. So what that means is that we can we can go through the first and last index, but if we ever have a certain condition where we want to stop, we would then break it. So for example, if we were baking everything, but let's say the oven is destroyed. Because the oven got destroyed, what you would do is like, let's create another custom event, break oven let's say oven, the oven broke. So we went through it, I don't know, on our second try, we wanna now break it. So you would take the pin and you go to break. And then you see how the line kind of goes through everything. If you actually double click on the line, it gives you a nice little node that you can move over. And if we do it again, we can do that. And you can drag it that keeps your pins kind of in order and it makes it like less cluttery. And then from here, because our oven is broken, this loop has been completed and we'll move on to the next step. So let's delete that. Um, a gate <laughs> is, let's see. Kind of think of it like a door. If the door is open, then it will do whatever uh, function is needed. If the door is closed, it will do nothing. So what you would do is that a, a gate's very, very specific. But let's say to open this door, let's say we have to, let's grab our bake. Actually, no, 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 let's, let's do this. Let's grab, put an oven, zoom in. What you have to do is in order to make any events happen, you have to go in the gate. So you'd have to open the gate. So if we plug that in, now the door is open. And from here, if you ever uh, want to call the function that happens after the exit, which is, think of it as the other side of the door. If you ever want to do whatever is at the other side of the door. So for this example, if we are wanting to, um, I don't know, bake a, bake a pie. If we want to bake a pie, the gate's open, and then now we want to do this action. What we'll have to do is we'll have to enter the gate. So this is like going through the door. We've opened the door, but now we have to actually um, go through it. So that's where you're entering it. So now that it's open, when we call this event, now we can bake and we bake a pie. If you ever close a door, so like if we grab break oven and plug that in, let's say the oven broke. So what it would mean is that because the oven broke, let's just disattach that. 
now when, when it, whenever we call the bake function, it's not going to go through because now the door is closed. We close the door, we'll never bake a pie until we reopen it by calling the put in oven again. So that's kind of what a gate does. And you have the ability to either make it start closed or open. Uh, so if you want it open from the beginning and you wanted to bake from the beginning, you'll be able to go through because obviously the oven's not broken at the beginning of the game. But maybe you need to put in the oven first before you can bake. So just keep that in mind. Let's zoom back in. And these two, do and and do once, are similar towards loops. What it means is do and means you're just going to do this a specific number of times. You're going to loop for a specific number. So if we were just wanting to do this four times, we will only do what is after the exit pin four times and that's it. And then of course you have the ability to reset it so that if you wanted to do it again, you could do that. So pretty simple. Do once is you will only do everything after the completed one time. And then at the end, you could reset it so that if we ever call this function again, you could do it again. So kind of like the gate, you'll do it one time and then it will go through and it's closed until it is reset. If it is not reset, you won't do it again. It is a one time event. So just remember that. If these two do not get reset, they will, even if you call it again, it's not going to happen. Moving on from here. We have sequence. This is, let's move it over here. A sequence allows you to do multiple different types of things. It kind of just helps you organize your blueprints. It will go through each step, but in order. So instead of like having something endlessly go to the right. So if we had bake, bake pie, bake cake. We have all three of these. It would start at the beginning where it's then zero, which is the first one we bake, we bake a pie and we bake a cake. But if you wanted to organize this better, we could do this. So we'll start with bake, then we'll bake a pie. You can add a pin so you can add more to the sequence and bake a cake. move that down to straighten these pins a little. So from here, it's just like how we had it in order. It will start from here and go down. So it kind of goes in the flow of up to down instead of left to right. But it can be in handy if you want to do multiple things at the beginning of your game, instead of having stuff endlessly go to where you're scrolling to the right, you can organize your code a little better. And just remember it will always go from the first one and down. Let's delete that. I've already showed you briefly what delay is, but delay allows you to pause the flow of your blueprint for a certain duration. Remember duration is in seconds. So always remember that the, val the float value there is in seconds time. Delay until next tick just pauses it for a single tick in the game or frames. And then once that happens, you go to the next. Sometimes you may just want something to pause just shortly, just so other things can calculate. Okay. Do do do. Let's delete that. Before I go into operators, which are basically math and booleans, what I want to explain is functions. Functions, very similar towards events, are specific events that you want to reuse that can pass along information or just something that happens just often. So for example, let's say we're baking, but if we're going to Where's our bake a pie, bake a cake? Okay, let's bring this over here. 
let's say we're baking, but to bake, we need to turn on the fire. And if we're turning on the fire, maybe we just want to set a function that whenever we bake a pie or bake a cake, we want to start the fire. If we go to the left, you'll see we have functions. Hit that plus button and create a fire. And from here, every time we bake something, we can just call a fire. So if you pull off, create a fire. And if we did control D, it copies. So it's a function we can use multiple times. It allows us to reuse code that we've already created and we can use it again. It helps simplify things. So for example, um, how we went over character jump, jumping is basically a function that Unreal Engine has already provided us. So if we did this again, player character, jump. You notice how it's a blue node. If you hover on top, it kind of like tells you exactly what it is. But this is a node that Unreal Engine has already made. They created this function and they allowed us to reuse it. And it will provide the same functionality to every character you have. They all have the ability to jump. And just like that, we did the same thing with creating our fire. Obviously, we didn't actually build the functions of it. We just simply created the function, showed you how to create a function. But you would need to go into the details of creating your fire. You'd have to make the effect. You'd have to add heat. You'd have to do all of those specifics. But nonetheless, that's how functions would work. They're things that you can reuse and easily call again in the future. And just like we do with events where you can pass along like an actor, you can also do the same thing with creating a fire. As you'll notice the details, we have inputs and outputs. But if you hover on top of events, you'll notice that it has just an input. What this means is that um, events can pass along information uh, that was provided to it. So when we did put in oven, we're calling this, and then you want to bake a cake, you're passing along this. So we're calling this event, but when we're creating a fire, let's say if we clicked on it, we have our input of, hey, maybe let's pass along the actor. So we'll t whether it is a cake or a pie, and you plug that in. But let's say when we created a fire, maybe there's a chance to burn the cake or pie and ruin it. So we want an output. And let's just say is burnt, question mark. Change this to Boolean. And what that means is after creating a fire, we can find out if it's true or false that it's been burnt and maybe we ruined the cake. So anytime we bake something, now we can see if maybe it fails. So you'd be able to pass that along. Okay, so let's delete these. Actually, no, we'll leave that. And then over here is just some very, very basic nodes. Now, again, I'm not gonna go into every single type. I did go a lot into events, flow controls. I'll go into operations in a second. There's a lot of different nodes out there. Just some really common ones that are used really often when you're using your character is you have the get player character. This is the, the um, your, your character. So like if you have, I don't know, a shooter, you have your player character and that is controlled by a controller. So every player in the game has a controller. That is what controls anything that happens in the game. It allows them to have a character or maybe multiple types of actors are owned by this controller. That lets you identify that the player owns whatever the case may be. 
This is just create a widget. This is very common when creating UIs. And then when creating widgets, if you ever need to make it visible, that is paired up with the add to viewport. So I'm not going too crazy in depth with all of these, but just know that these are super useful and very common. There's a lot more things available. This is just to get the location of the actor. So if you ever wanted the location of the player character, you could plug that in and get the location. Or if you wanted the transform, which transform is basically, I went over variables already, but it's the location, the rotation, and the scale. You could also plug that in and get that too. Or you could do the same thing for our, our box if you wanted to get the transformation. And rotation is just splitting that off and getting the rotation. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to re-pin it, recombine. Okay. But there are tons of different nodes out there, lots of things available. So we'll go over more later on. And then operators, these are used when you're wanting to do any type of math or you're wanting to add things together. If you just wanna see if things are the same, not the same, uh, things like that. I did just go over some basic math, but also keep in mind, it does not have to be math. So let me pull off the equal. If we were to actually right click this slot, this is all the things we can turn this into. So we can check to see if two vectors equal the same. So are they in the same location? And you can do equal, okay, are they? Or maybe you wanna do um, like rotator. Um, are they both rotating the same direction? Are they both facing the same direction? If that's true or false, things like that. So these are all just basic math things. I'm not gonna go into math uh, and understand math, but just know that um, what these symbols mean. So for example, less than um, 10 is not less than two, so therefore it equals false. So I kind of just gave scenarios of math and whether that happens. The other thing is the not equal, that's the exclamation mark and equal. Seven, um, not equal seven is false because, well, seven is the same number, therefore it equals. Something you could do with this is if you wanted to ever see if maybe two vectors are not the same, maybe um, two actors are not the same, whatever the case may be. So that's what operators are. They help compare two things together so that you can see whether they are true or false. If you ever want to add two floats together, two vectors, whatever the case is, you have the ability to do math in Unreal Engine. The last thing is bool operators. So these pair up really nicely with branches or anything that requires a condition. If you ever wanna to check to see if anything either is true, not true, or something that uh, maybe two conditions equal true. Uh, I think I missed one, there we go. <laughs> so to go over these ones, since there's not many, the and operator is what you would do is you would plug in two booleans and check to see if both of them are true or if both of them are false. So like, let's say if we wanted to track if we were um, baking a cake and also are we in the kitchen, you would plug in both two booleans of are we, are we in the kitchen and then are we also baking a cake? If that is true, this will print true. If we are not in the kitchen, but we're baking, this will print false. What an and would do huh, is just n is not. So instead of and, it's the reverse. So if both of these are true, this is going to come out false. If both of these are false, this is going to come out true. So it's just the reverse of and. And then we have 
not, which just means uh, if you plug in a bool, so like, let's say if we plugged in, are we in the kitchen? So let's say, yes, we're in the kitchen. This will print out false. It just reverses whatever input you put in. Uh, or we'll start with or because these are both derivatives of or. What you would do is let's say you put in, or are we baking a cake or are we baking a pie? So if we're baking cake, but not baking a pie, this is gonna come out true because one of these are true. If both of these are false, this is gonna come out false. So this just needs one of them to be true uh, in order to become true. Um, not or is the reverse. So in order to be true, both of these have to be either false or both have to be true. If one is false, uh, one is true, it will come out false. Um, ooh, X or was, oh, I, I've never used this one myself. I think exclusive or of two values. Um, actually, I don't feel like I'm equipped to explain that one right now. Um, I've, I've never touched it, but I could always go into that later if somebody actually truly wants to. But I hope that gave you a great understanding of nodes. I know I may have jumped around a little bit, but I tried to explain it uh, to the best of my capabilities. And hopefully it gave you a understanding of what all these nodes were. Uh, I didn't go into building tons of functionalities. We only did theoretical things. However, when I continue this on, I will go into explaining very um, basic functions, but I wanted to make sure you could grasp what events nodes were and flow controls because those are really key into building everything. Uh, you create lots of custom events. You do use the ones Unreal provide you, uh, but you end up creating tons and tons of custom events to call lots of things. And then flow controls help you immensely when you're building out functionalities because nothing is ever going to be just a straight line every time. I mean, you could do that, but that's probably a lot more work than you ever want to do. Um, and then operators are just great to know that you know exist and they're really helpful um, with whatever you're going to do, because I mean, booleans are used often, as you can tell that all of these pop out booleans. So I hope that helped. Feel free to join the discord. If you ever have any questions, like subscribe, all the self promo stuff. It's great to have you guys here. We'll see you next time.